All right. Well, welcome everybody to the September 6th, 2022 board Delta Amateur Radio Club board meeting. Uh, first off, um, we need to figure out what we're going to do for next week. So before we do that, Joe, do you happen to know any new information about the church and the air? Have they no. made any progress on that? No, I ha have not heard anything. Okay. Um, well, I went by there last, late last week, um, I guess maybe on Friday, and it, it was hot. I mean, the lights were off, uh, you know, it didn't seem like anything had been done as of Friday. A bunch of fans were sitting around. Um, I'm good to do with whatever you guys want to do. I would probably prefer, uh, meeting on Zoom if it's, if because I, I just don't expect the air to be fixed by Tuesday. Um, but I don't know. I mean, we could just make do with it and and go from there. What what do you guys think? Well, I guess a, a question I have, I was thinking maybe the air upstairs is still on and you might be able to take chairs and, and move it out into the hall if you want it, if you really want it to meet. I don't think that's real desirable, but it's going to be a high of 84 next Tuesday. But not too bad. Which is not too bad. But mm -hmm. hey, so maybe they'll drink more drinks and I can get rid of my drinks. <laughs> uh, so it's up to y'all. Yeah, because by 7, it's supposed to drop to, well, let's say by 6, it's supposed to drop to 77. So, I don't know. We could always just go for it and open mm -hmm. the windows and then bring some extra fans and do our best. And if we sweat a little, it can't be worse than field day. <laughs> but, I don't know. Through that. Just all... uh, do you anticipate a really long meeting? Or would it be more like an hour? Um, so for the program, and I wanted to ask you guys, I have not pulled it up yet. Um, I honestly, I've been out of town a lot this week. I didn't get back to like one in the morning last night. But Carolyn, you sent me a, a Morse code video a while back. And so I know we had a lot of interest in CW Express at Field Day. Uh, we've got some folks who have started learning it recently. We've got folks like Pat and you who have kind of learned it, uh, been learning it for a while, or, or I guess like Pat, who's known it for quite a while. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, from the, it was a feature from the Long Island CW Club, which is, I think they're up to around 4,000 members now, 4,000 plus. Um, learning CW. So it's a big club. They have a lot, lot of programs. So, so the one that you sent, um, that's an hour 45. I'm sure we could, surely we could cut to it and maybe do just a 30 minute or 20 minute excerpt yeah. of it. Yeah, I um, think the PowerPoint or the there there was actually a presentation by someone from the Long Long Island CW Club with a PowerPoint, and then there was a Q and A afterwards. And I think the Q and A was was went for quite a while. The intro went for quite a while too. Yeah. So if we could queue it up and then stop it, yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I I cannot. <laughs> what we learned last time is that I cannot play a video while hosting Zoom on my laptop. So somebody would need to be at home. So Carolyn, I don't know if you want to do that or sure. Joe or anybody who could be at home to play that. Uh, and we can figure out, I can figure out where to get it queued up or somebody else can. Um, but I figured if we did do the hybrid meeting, it would help to have somebody at home who could get that going. If y'all don't have an um, objection to doing something, you know, something maybe simple of how to get into CW. Um, yeah that's what so it that is. way yeah. uh, so folks would kind of I mean so it's not teaching them CW but they can kind of get a few ideas of where to check out who in our club uh, knows how to do CW so uh, kind of get them in touch with some Elmers or uh, get them some resources at their fingertips but 
There's now, a, I would be if I mean, there's a World War II video that shows about CW about the timing of CW that I think is you know I've seen it and, and rhythm is is the greatest part of of learning I think the greatest part of learning uh, CW and that goes into it uh, I can uh, get the site uh, bring up give you the sent the site and see if you if you like that or not okay um yeah so I, 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 I just got a, a text back from michael uh, gwen he said uh the temperature was set on 80 upstairs and it's holding it at that from what he understands yeah okay all right well we can Excuse me, y'all. I feel like I'm about to sneeze. Um, all right. Well, in that case, do we want to just kind of do our best to go on and do still do the hybrid meeting then next week? Well, it's fine with me. But I'll be at home. You know, try. If you wanted me to cue something up, I can do it from home. Well, that would that would help, and I know you, with your drive anyway. I know you've expressed um, preference towards not driving in, so that would that would be a big help. And and if okay. it helps you out, that would that would work for me. Um, does that? Uh, well, we'll vote on it. So, all in favor of having the hybrid meeting, uh, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Okay. All right. Hybrid. Um, I've saying, got do we have other choices? Well, we could go on. We got a hybrid. Only. We got yeah, online only or in person. Zoom room. It's if it's in person. I mean, I like the idea of trying to get upstairs if that's a different unit. But the other side of that is that that will take away our hybrid option. Um, and so I would rather just bring a lot of fans and open some windows and um, see what we can do that way. It might give you better reception on, on the second floor. Yeah. Be hotter up there too. There's light. Is there, is there a uh, projector on, oh, I guess, well, I guess we could do the projector anywhere, but is there a room big enough upstairs where we could get 20 to 30 people? Well, it no. depends on how many people we have. So, there again, there's 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 a room or two that might hold, but I mean, it just depends on how many people we have. If we had the same that we had last time, 20, 25, might be able to fit in a room. Or in the hallway, but it might be feasible to put them in the hallway. But on another... Is, <clears throat> is, is there an alternative to the steps there? Is there an elevator or...? No. No. Okay, so that may not be good for some members that I'm not sure how everybody does with stairs. We'll just have to see and, and when we get there and see see how it does, you know, see how the temperature is. Open the open the windows and put fans in and get the problem. Yeah. So um I guess just in case, because again, I don't hopefully they'll have it fixed by then. I don't expect them to. Um if you have a box fan at home uh, or, or a fan or anything like that, if you can bring it. I think what the problem may be is uh, I heard the other day that it, air conditioners have doubled in price and harder to get. Or maybe it's the doubled in price that's got them stopped. I don't know. But when the big, big commercial air conditioners, it, it just takes a while to get. There's some definite supply chain issues. Um, from what I understand in China, they're having a heat wave and a drought. And some of the uh, factories uh, where they turn out a lot of the uh, components for air conditioners uh, are offline from what I understand. Yeah, that's, I, I read that too. And then I also, uh, I had to have some service done on an AC uh, uh, unit. Thankfully it didn't need to be replaced. It was just a capacitor. But, uh, 
it was pretty pricey compared to what it was just a few years ago. Yeah, it's like doubled in price. Yeah. Some people it was basically have doubled or replaced the capacitor. <clears throat> Some people have stopped uh, construction, even breaking ground because of the cost increases and stuff like ACs. And knowing the, I don't know the financial position of the church, but I don't think it's a wealthy church. And if you double the price of a unit for that building, that's going to be pretty high. Um, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying, Lynn. I I don't. Ex I mean, they might have the money there, but with what we've kind of been hearing, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't um, either. I mean, I, I have no. I may be a very wealthy church, but. But uh, the good thing, though, is at least we're out of the summer, and that might be what did it in if it had to overwork over the summer, but um, at least we're getting into the cooler uh, cooler months now. Unless it's a heat pump. <laughs> it's not a heat pump. Okay. I didn't know what they had. <laughs> All right. So, okay, well, we'll plan on hybrid then, unless Jim, because you were asking the questions, do you want us to consider online only? I, I was just, I was curious if if there was any thoughts from anybody else as to whether we wanted to do something online. I know that it's, I know, honestly, it's easier to, to do the online only um, when you're presenting a, a video or, you know, when it's something simple. Um, so I didn't know if we wanted to, to go that route or not. Um, I'm on call next week again. Never ending. <laughs> so I am as well. I'm on call, but. Yeah, so uh, you know, hopefully it, that doesn't impact my ability to attend. But there's Retirement always that chance. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for 2038. Yes, I know yeah. what you mean. And the honeydew wonderful. list will be long. Yeah, yeah that's right. You just keep it as long as you want, just by those short pads of paper. Okay. <laughs> you won't get bored. <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't. You'll wonder how you ever worked. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I part of me wants to kind of do the the online only just because it would be easier. But the other side is that, you know, just offering the consistency of still meeting in person, I think is going to benefit a lot of our, our members. Um, so as long as it's not too miserable in there, uh, I know that'll, that should be good. Okay. We need to make right. sure that the members understand that there is no air conditioning. Because a lot a of people that are, older heat is not good to them if it's really hot just as if it's really cold it's a good good call and i don't uh, understand do that because they want to keep it hot in the winter and cold in the summer so. all right um last time the church had uh ac problems was when the call sign kj4 tzj was issued I don't know how long. I mean, that was a sweltering night. We came in and transformer on the pole. One leg was out. Mm. Uh, but y'all didn't know about it ahead of time, did no, you? No, we didn't know about it ahead of time at all. Okay, so, so do we know that it is, that it is in fact, still out? or Yes, it's still out. It is. Okay. Okay. As of Friday, it was, and so that's why I was kind of asking Joe if he had heard anything new. Um, of course, I mean, even if I would have been up there Friday, there's a chance they could have had it off, but they were installing it Friday or something like that. But um, I just don't see them having a quick turnaround with the way prices are and supply and demand and and all that. So, it was but, 2010 um, when it was out. Well, that shouldn't even blow out that. Well, that was the, that wasn't the unit. That was the pole. I 
I'm just not sure how, how much they actually use that, that building. All right. So uh, I sent this to everybody's email. I wanted to kind of review it again in this. I have not emailed um, the list of those who were interested yet. I've got those names pulled aside and I'm gonna try to email them tonight or tomorrow. Um, but it is gonna be, so we switched from the Germantown Fire Department to the um, Shelby County Sheriff's Office because we had kind of settled on a date that seemed to work well for our members and work well for Neshoba's members. And that was September 17th. And it was taking a long time to get traction with Germantown Fire Department. And I know they seemed like they were interested in working with us to offer that. But uh, if they have a lot, if they have too much on their plate to where we can't get anything going, then uh, it's not gonna really help help anybody and we didn't want to be too much of a burden on them if it if it didn't seem like we were high enough on the priority so Fred and I talked and then he uh, was able to get us uh, something teamed up with the Shelby County Sheriff's Office pretty quick so the next business day after we had kind of talked um, and double checked if you know if that was maybe a good idea with the Germantown Fire Department they said that was was probably the best thing for this this go round so uh, it is going to be, we're going to team up with the Shelby County Sheriff's Office. Uh, so it'll be the AHA training. And uh, Scott McDermott, actually, I think uh, he might help uh, be one of the instructors. Uh, I know he expressed interest, and I talked to him a little more about it uh, with all that. So I think uh, we're going to have two hands who are going to help instruct uh, the class as well. So that and, and some of the other instructors may have their amateur radio license, but I know Fred and, and Scott are, are active in uh, our club, so I thought that worked out pretty well. But it'll be, the class will start at 8 o'clock on the 17th, which is a Saturday. It'll go for about two and a half hours. It is adult CPR, AED only. And then uh, after the class, um, we should be able to go in uh, the Sh Sheriff's Office Volunteer Service Bureau is close by and so since that's where a lot of the volunteers work out of Fred lined it up where we could actually whoever takes the class has the opportunity to tour that facility afterwards and he said something about we might be able to hear and meet uh, one of the reserve officers to hear about that program uh, maybe the K-9 unit stuff like that um, and then especially the community volunteering program and then uh, depending on if folks want to Afterwards, we might open it up to see if everybody wants to go out to eat somewhere, uh, if we can find somewhere that, that would host that. And I think we could now uh, with the way things are going. Of course, a lot might not, and, and that wouldn't be mandatory or anything, but if folks want to do that, uh, that could be an option. Uh, it will be, let's see. So there will be a small cost uh, to anyone since it is going to be AHA. Um, Apparently, the way the American Heart Association does it is they require the use of a workbook when folks take that class, uh, but the bare cost of that is is four dollars after shipping and everything it's four dollars so. Um, Fred has already ordered enough books uh, for the class, which is 20 and then um, if. If nobody wants to get a certification card, then they can get just a. a certificate of completion from the sheriff's office uh, for most people who don't need the certification or don't want the certification and they just want something to document that they took the class uh, then the four dollar workbook cost is going to do everything they need but for the folks who want to get that actual AHA card then um, it's going to be eighteen dollars more so 22 total would include the workbook and the actual um, Heart Saver CPR AED card, which is you can see on this document. Is it good uh, for just three years? Is it still that way? I think so. It's only two or three years, so I think it is. Three sounds it's, right. It's two years. Um, two it's every years. two years. I couldn't remember what it was. It's every two years for right, the uh, AED. A CPR. It's great, it's great to have that card because if you do stop. 
and help somebody like in a restaurant or on the highway, you're protected. You are protected uh, through the. You are protected uh, through the. Uh, all insurance. Yeah. All insurance. Oh. Yeah. That's good. It's um, sad that you have to do that these days. But um, sad that you have to do that these days. But you know, society, it's great to carry those things that way. Society, it's great to carry those things that way. You have a, are you logged in on your phone too? You have a, are you logged in on your phone too? No, I don't know what's going on here. I just noticed no, that. No, I don't know what's going on here. I just noticed that. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'll leave the meeting and come back in. I'll leave the meeting and come back in. Uh, uh, it might not. Okay. So, um, okay. So, um, I'm thinking it wasn't right, I'm going to start. Yeah, All right. Um, just in case, can everybody mute? All right. Um, just in case, right. can everybody mute? Right. All right. Do we have an echo test? Test. Okay. All right. Well, um, we can all take turns. Joe, keep an eye on when Lo, uh, when Lynn tries to get back in. Um, Lens back in. Perfect. Uh, okay, so um, what we decided on to make it easy, Neshoba fronted the money for all 20 notebooks because he said these workbooks are going to be good for a few years anyway. So um, between the volunteer stuff and Way they are going to be in hand early enough that we will have them because what we did not want to do is wait until both club meetings to take up money and then not um not be able to get the, the workbooks in and time the way all the mail and everything's been going lately so uh this should be so what we're going to do is that we we he and i'll kind of settle up later between the two clubs but anybody who wants to take the class who's in delta club uh, we'll get in touch with me, and they'll, if there's a check or anything, they'll make it payable to Delta Club, and then anybody in Neshoba will work with him and then make their checks payable to Neshoba, and then uh, I'll get with Jim a little later to make sure that however many Delta Club members have paid us, uh, we'll get that money um, to to who we need to um, either to Neshoba for the workbooks or to uh, I've got to confirm if it would go to American Heart Association or the Sheriff's Office for the cards, but but we've got a little bit of time for that. So um, we would like to know, and as I start taking everything up, uh, I'm going to try to get an idea whether folks want to do the cards or not, because uh, that way it'll just kind of help him plan on how many cards they're going to have to fill out. Um, so one of the big things uh, that I, we're going to have to make sure Anybody interested, we're going to have to make them aware is that uh, I guess uh, several years ago, ago, they had some issues with some of the clothing that was worn for some of the training stuff. So since we are going to actually be in the Shelby County Sheriff's Office Training Academy, uh, they do require business or business casual attire. So no shorts, no blue jeans. Um, I mean, it would have to be um something you know like you'd wear to church or work or or something like that so um i know a few people may not be thrilled with that but that's just since we're going through them this time that's just part of their rules that we'll we'll follow and plus it'll be good um we'll be there dressed up look nice uh it should leave a very good um uh, leave a very good impact hopefully on the sheriff's office and it just kind of gives us another angle to work with them and get them uh where we network uh with another entity in our in our community as ham radio operators so should we wear our our club shirts 
Um, that's a good, that's a good question. I'll, uh, I think if we're wearing like slacks or something that, yeah, that, that might be okay, good. but let me, let me email him. Um, I'll email him in a moment and, uh, that's a really good idea. Business dress these days is a polo shirt and slacks. Yeah, you yeah. can get into the bar up here at this fancy shopping center we got in Germantown because it has a collar. Mm -hmm. They consider yeah. business casual. And that's on September what? Anywhere from about an hour to an hour and a half. So if folks decide to stay for that tour, then they're going to be there from roughly eight to noon. So, but for the, the price, um, I don't know how many of you have gone through the uh, American Heart Association classes lately. Um, Last but year. It, <laughs> but they're pretty pricey. Um, I mean, I did the adult and infant first aid CPR first, first aid. CPR and AED, and it was, I think, like 120 or something. Um, Find you know, a hospital and go through it. <laughs> they have them every two years. I made it. Well, I was I was wanting to get it done before my uh, before my nephew was born, so I was trying to kind of cram it in quick. But there's um, always a hospital. That, yeah, um, but especially with this, I was excited because uh, mine's current, but just being able to work with it where our ham radio operators have a chance to do this for a lot cheaper you know so yeah 22 dollars is a great price red cross charges a whole lot more than that mm -hmm. for sure um so i will send more out um at, like i said an email tonight or tomorrow but in the and then i'll kind of keep you guys updated as we um get names in or as we fill up but uh do you all have any questions about that or comments concerns i'm i'm hoping personally that the, if it seems like we're getting enough interest so, so far that i'm really hoping this works out well if we leave a good impression uh and then the, especially having the tour and everything there i'm hoping that it works out to where we might do this again maybe in the spring or uh, a few months down the road or something but we'll see Uh, let's see. Oh, not sure. Uh, All right. Um, Joe, I'm sure you were planning on talking about this with, um, well, actually, before we get to that. So, um, Huntsville, uh, Joe, I think later is going to update everybody on kind of how the, the numbers did for the sales and everything. But I did want to mention to you guys, and I think I mentioned this to Joe when we got back. I went to the ARRL presentation, um, kind of the membership meeting during the Huntsville Ham Fest, and there weren't a lot of people in the room. Uh, the Most of the people, it seems like, were ARRL volunteers. Uh, so probably not a lot of people who didn't have some active part in making that meeting happen, but uh, they made a big push on um, apparently the, the budget right now, uh, the proposed budget for the upcoming year is in a million dollar deficit. And so um, I think from what the way they were talking about the the new membership renewal program, it seems like that's why they're trying to push that. And uh, I feel like the way we've got it set up, uh, and I talked about, about it with Joe a little bit, but um, you know, he made this point and I agree with him, but the way Delta Club has it set up with, you know, we offer the free Delta Club membership when they join AWRL uh, and their, that first year of Delta Club membership. And I'm sure a lot of clubs don't do that. I know uh, we talk about and encourage joining AWRL quite a bit uh, when it comes up from time to time. So I think from what it sounds like, we do a pretty good job promoting that within our club, but it sounds like overall membership has not grown 
Uh, I can't remember, but it's been a couple decades, it seems like, uh, since the AWR mem membership has actually grown and not decreased. Um, so uh, they were talking about that a lot. They were talking about uh, both an AWRL and across ham radio, they're finding, especially in the past two or three years, there's been a significant uh, decrease in people who are willing to step up and serve in leadership roles. So it was a very dire um, it was a very dire message that they were sending, but uh, uh, they were. They, it seemed like they were encouraged enough to try to say that they were trying to to re restructure some things. They're trying to work on some IT issues that they've had, uh, and they've brought on some people to do that. Um, but it seems like they're really pushing for clubs to uh, to work with and share ideas about how to to bring in new people and plan on leadership changes and and uh, you know as, as folks get older and get ready to get out of leadership roles uh, bringing in enough people and not necessarily younger people but bringing in enough people who would be willing to fill those shoes so it was just very interesting um, it was a very interesting session uh, to sit in on and I hate that more people weren't there to hear it but I don't know, I guess it kind of fits as to, to why they were at the point of having that discussion, so. Uh, but I don't know, any questions about that? Joe, do you wanna fill us in? Are you ready to fill us in on the numbers from Huntsville or you, do you wanna uh, wait till later? Uh, actually, I didn't, uh, Huntsville, we uh, took in about $1,250. Uh, That's on the sale of equipment. No, th thousand. I'm trying to remember now what it, it was, was because 200 of it was Bill Stevens equipment, which we gave directly to Bonnie. Um, and we took in 1,254, so it was 1,000. 54 that we made uh, on the Huntsville Ham Fest. Uh, it did cost us um, $100 for the tables. And we had to buy one entry ticket, which was 115 that I'll, I'll put in a uh, request to get reimbursed. But uh, I thought it was a pretty good session and I've got uh, the two K2s, I'm negotiating with a guy to, that was wanting to buy them. Uh, I thought he was wanting to buy them at a lot lower price than I would, I'd rather, than I'd rather receive. But anyway, I'll see. I'm trying to wait him out a little bit. Uh, he, he offered 600 and, and I went at 700 and I'll, I'll go to 650, you know, see if, compromise but i thought i would wait and see if he really wanted it or not so that's that's uh, it for right now also the N naqcc uh swap shop guy passed away and there's a new guy that just came on this past week or so and and i'll get uh, some of those items uh, up for sale on the NAQCC uh, uh, shop uh, shop and swap page. Um, I did go out to uh, Steve Frazier's father's house and in and, uh, inventory. Well, I inventoried the tubs uh, that we had from the uh, ham fest just to make sure I knew what we had there because there was uh, money that uh, wasn't sure exactly how it but when it was written down so uh did that and then also there was one tub that that uh, steve uh had not uh looked at uh we had it out there and i inventoried that tub so we will have an inventory of what's out there uh got that taken care of or getting that taken care of so and then uh um, there was one other, I'm going blank on, on a, uh, 
then I've got a couple of things from Al Simpson's uh, uh, house that he that is that Barbara gave us. Uh, the only thing worthwhile is a couple of uh, uh, two meter FM uh, amplifiers, 25 and 30, uh, 25 watt and a 30 watt amplifier. So uh, those are some, a couple of things that we can uh, do uh, sell for uh, techs that have handhelds that want a little more power in their, from their car. So that, that's the equipment side. You wanna go into the membership Yeah, I can a little. You'll probably need to fill in some. Uh, we had a really good group that went on the bus, um, didn't have any issues uh, getting there except for, uh, I think they were, um, the guy who we had, were supposed to be in touch with didn't answer his phone when Jim, and Jim could probably better better describe this, but uh, didn't answer his phone when he and, and Steve called, and uh, so we had to wait for a few minutes, but it wasn't raining, it wasn't too hot. So uh, I'm personally not gonna complain too much because it could have been much, much, much worse since there was rain uh, forecasted throughout the day. So we really lucked out on that timing. But uh, we had a good group that went, uh, we had a good turnout. The, uh, the crowds um, were certainly a lot larger than they've been for the past two years. Um, it seemed like there were a lot more vendors, um, definitely more flea market vendors than actual, like the new type vendors and even like Giga Parks and, and some of the others, the booths were a lot smaller uh, with the way that they had it, um, but they were still selling uh, the same amount of product and everything, but um, it was a really good trip. Uh, we had a lot of folks who haven't been before who attended and so I tried to kind of work my way around the bus and um, talk to a few folks one-on-one. -on -one. There was one, uh, and I forgot to scan her application. So when we get to that point, um, I know we'll need to cover it, but uh, Patricia, she actually on the bus filled out an application to join. And um, I think a long, long, long time ago, so like maybe eight to 10 years ago, Joe might be able to, to better know um, or better inform us on that, but she hasn't been in, involved with the club in a very long time. And something about, she said, of being able to, she opened up the email uh, that she got about it. And I guess the way things have gone lately, something told her that she needed to get back into ham radio. And so um, that's kind of what she did. And, and she said she was very glad that she went, uh, you know, spoke to some of our other new folks, uh, David and, um, oh gosh. Jonathan. And my mind's drawing a blank. Jonathan and, and some others, and they all seemed like, uh, they all said that they thought it was a very gr uh, fair value for what they paid on the bus. And they also said that had we not offered it, um, they definitely would not have gone to Huntsville. And a lot of the stuff that they were able to learn and figure out and buy and, and see and, and everything, uh, they said that they felt a whole lot better uh, than you know, going and, and learning all that than had they not gone. So um, I know we kind of assume that anyway, but I just thought it was a good reminder that, and, and it's always good to hear from them that, you know, we may, we may take a little bit of a loss as a club, um, but, you know, as we've said it over and over again, uh, I think it's a good service activity, as long as we can manage it where we don't lose out too much, um, I mean, it certainly makes a difference and it might be making a big difference on whether these folks are going to get involved uh, with our club or with ham radio in general. So uh, I thought that was good to hear, but everybody I talked to seemed like they were having a good, good time. So Jim, I don't know, you went, yeah. uh, Scott, what do y'all think how it went? The, I missed the dot coats. <laughs> yeah it's okay we're okay well i wasn't going to complain about the diet coke but the only thing i what i was going to mention was that um i think some people in, including my wife were a little annoyed that we were unable to um access the bus when we wanted to that the uh that the bus driver was um 
I guess, you know, trying to rest in the back and he didn't want anybody coming and going. So I don't know if that is. Yeah, I know I went out there once and about. it was locked, but other times it was open. And... Yeah. So. You actually can open the bus from the outside. Huh. Okay. Well, because I know somebody, and I forgot about that. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, so I don't know if that's, I don't know what the, I mean, Joe, what, what do you think the best way to to be to, well, th this event has gone and passed, but like in future trips, do we need to stress that more uh, the day of or beforehand when we're getting ready for this event? Because um, I think last year there was a brief issue with that. Um, and then this year, which I, I wasn't sure. I'd only heard of one person coming up to say, and it was during the lunchtime, so I, I wasn't sure if he had gone in to get lunch or I what. I just assumed he went in to get the leave or enough, go to the restroom or something. So. You know, because I do like our stuff being secure. <laughs> but I know if we advertise that the folks can get on there frequently, then um, I don't know if we need to maybe get a sign or something for them or, or what. Um, I don't well, know. What do y'all think, Joe? What do you think? Well, well if say, if, yeah. if we can open the door from the outside, just make sure we have the instructions that everybody can op open the door. I think you just talk to the uh, driver company and tell them when you're doing your contract. Look, we're telling our our people as we have in times past that we can get in and out of the bus when they want to and so you know the driver need, needs to do something else if he's not going to be on the uh bus or, well if know, the driver's going to have a, a break we need to know what time that break is going to be so we can yeah. everyone on the bus will say hey he's going to be on a sleepy break from for two hours we just need to know when he's going to do it and pass along to every everyone in the bus that way everyone knows that's his break and they will have the bus secured and whatever. So I think really yeah. just need more communication to the bus driver or into the contract with the- Oh, but have it with both of them, have it in the contract and with the bus driver. Right. Cause I think Joe, don't we tip the bus driver too? Yeah, we gave him a hundred dollars. Well, yeah. we need to make sure that he knows that he's a good buddy of ours. Yeah. I don't well, know, that's a good you idea. might Maybe. think that that's a small amount. But that's, yeah, that that's was four dollars a person. Hundred bucks is pretty good. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I pulled up. I would, my... I would want them to. I would want them to do have a break for sure. Um, you know, so that way they're rested for the ride back. But like maybe like Scott said, if we if we could work something out the morning of on the way down to find out roughly what time. The driver wants to take a break so that way we can let everybody know and yeah so we're not we're not pounding that. on the door and waking them yeah. up and annoying them yeah if we can this give them the, a yeah. first trip that uh, the driver's ever stopped in 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 route to go to the bathroom yes oh really yeah <laughs> oh man oh. just don't get that driver next time <laughs> yeah. We just need to remember these things next time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I pulled up, uh, we were $293 and 15 cents in the hole. So that's 293. The that's 15. the least we've ever lost, isn't it, Joe? No. Uh, I just thought we've made that. money before. I said that okay, but that's the least we've lost. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Well, Joe, we're we gonna sell those two radios to that guy. I hope so. Well, that should offset the cost of the of the trip. That's six hundred dollars. So that would help. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, but then again, that. I guess you know where do, where does equipment sales go? It goes to the treasury, so I guess it can be directed to any any location. 
There we go. All right, Carolyn, well, we'll wait on you to make sure you're good to go. Sorry about that, Carolyn. That's fine. Yeah, everything is in sync now. Thank you. Oh, good. So the only the only thing of importance, I guess, that that was mentioned, if, if you want to know, Joe said that we were $293.15 in the hole. That's it. So. But that's not, not based on, on us getting the a lot of the supply, the food items from from yeah. the club. Uh, we probably had $75, you know, from the club. Uh, I don't really think you need to report a loss. I mean, you know, it's, well, I think you do, call. but to, to let the people know that the, the value that they paid is, is less than, than it, it's costing. We're not making money off of it. Well, that's a good point to let them yeah, know we're, we're not making money on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It might tell you to stop doing it. <laughs> yeah, we had 25 riders. We had 28 paid. Uh, three could not go because of COVID. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I, I thought overall it was a good trip. It could have been a lot worse on the few things that didn't quite go as planned, but um, I thought it was a great trip. Everybody who went had fun. So, um, you know, I know some things are going to not go as planned, but at the end of the day, uh, if they came back happy and safe, then, um, you know, all is well. The bus uh, didn't break down in the on the way the back, which we, happened down. one time before. Mm-hmm. So a, a good trip overall. Um, so there's not a whole lot to report here and, and I'll let Jim kind of fill in a few more things after this meeting if it's not too late and hopefully it won't be. Uh, Jim, Mike and I are going to uh, stay on the Zoom and talk a little bit because uh, the PayPal thing is kind of cleared up. So we're going to at least look and try to figure out some of the basics of what we might have to do to link PayPal to the website. So progress has been made uh do you want to fill them in on the details jim yeah the only thing i know is that something triggered the uh the lockdown of our account and after speaking to somebody and providing um our federal ein and and providing you know some other details about what the club does and that type of thing um they they lifted the restriction so we have that we have the paypal account linked to the club uh, checking account so we can um, accept payment um, looking at the at the paypal um, website right now in front of me i see that you know we have the ability to set up like like we can you know print out like a qr code that somebody can scan with their phone it'll take them right to paypal where they can make a payment um, we can build something into the website uh, with a you know uh, you know, with like a, like a checkout now kind of thing and they can make their payment there. Um, so it, I guess we need to just look at how we want to do that. And there is a, uh, an option on here to make a test payment so we can, um, we can test this out before we go live with it. Um, how much does it cost us every, every time somebody pays their, their membership? It's 1.99% plus 49 cents. So, but I think, uh, didn't we think that we would have that op? We should be able to have that as an option where that can, that fee can be passed on. We'll just process. say that we, that it's that much more. Yeah. Yeah. If we'll you figure out that. what that fee is and, and add it, to, uh, for twenty twenty dollars, two percent is forty cents plus forty nine, so that's eighty nine. So round it off to a dollar, so it'd be twenty one dollars if you do it PayPal. 
Yeah, that's what a lot of places. Is that do. the new increased price, Jim, or the old? Uh, that's what it what it shows currently. There's um, going up in in price. Yeah, I need to I need to look at that and see if I can find if if that's. I know the lady that does the tags or, or whatever gets three dollars and fifty star three fifty extra or something like that if you pay by credit card. And it wondering. might depend too, because um, I know for a while uh, at one of the businesses I used to work at, we had like a three percent just because the the credit card machine that we used it was like three percent um yeah. or some might be as low as one and a half or two percent so it really just depends on who you go with three percent's so. the lowest i've heard of. that's what we pay at church but um i suppose if anybody else wants to sit in on that you're you're obviously welcome to i know that was our plan though was to to kind of talk about that and, and um, screen share and, and all that to help help get an idea of what what our next steps were. So uh, I just wanted to briefly mention that we don't have a whole lot of details yet on what we're about to do, but um, but it is finally the ball is slowly rolling. So yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. So I've already emailed um, John and. I'm not going to make a big deal about this, but uh, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be out of town the week, the first week of October uh, for a work trip. And we're going to be in Eastern time. So I'm not with, with everything going on uh, with what they've got on the agenda and everything. I'm not sure if I'm going to be on the next board meeting or not. Uh, I'm certainly going to try to, but John said he was good to be, to be ready to go and, and lead that board meeting. So I'll get with him before to make sure uh, y'all have got everything you need. And I'm still gonna try to log on for the whole board meeting, but just in case I cannot, um, I wanted to make sure something was set up. So let's see. All right, and then uh, something that we've been talking about um, where I'd sent something to Jim, I haven't really done a whole, whole lot with it yet. But uh, he sent me, I guess, with the, I don't know if that's what, what you got when you logged on to pay it or, or if that's what you found or whatever, but he sent me a list of our insured equipment. So at some point, um, not in the next week or two, but probably in about a month or so, I'm going to try to sit down and start compiling um, a list because I know we've got um, like the laptop. I think we've got a treasurer's laptop and some other equipment that's not insured. So try to get us one document with all of our equipment um, and then write down where everything is. So whether it's at a certain repeater site, whether it's with the treasurer, secretary, president, whoever, um, and pr eventually print that off and, and give it to, to Carolyn to put in the secretary's binder. Um, I don't think we've had a problem with that, but um, you know, I know it's like when they tell you to go through your house and write your serial numbers down for all your electronics and things like that. Hopefully you never need to do that. But the reality is that um, if you ever need that, uh, then it always helps when you've got it. So just kind of trying to go through and do like an inventory equipment list of what, um, what the Delta club has and where it's at and everything. So, and that might, that should also help too, when we go and transition, Position roles and everything. Again, I'm not going to do much with that yet, but just something for us to keep in mind. Uh, the last thing I had, again, yeah, what, I, I know we what, had I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Can I can I jump in real quick? Yes. Yeah. One yeah, thing yeah. that that I that I did look at briefly was the value on some of our equipment or what the, what the replacement cost would be um, because we have there's some repeaters there that if we needed to replace them um, they're you know they may be five hundred dollars more per unit than what we have them insured for right now the insurance is replacement cost yeah but we but we pay for the insurance based on the value that we report for each of those items. It's like a dollar forty per thousand dollars. 
or something like that of equipment or or dollar forty or dollar forty per hundred dollars something like that anyway there is it is based yeah. on what we've what we list in the equipment or we have listed you know, as the equipment um, that we are insuring and the value that we listed it at so I'm, if we're I'm looking thinking at, that is that as long as the uh, price that we're asking as replacement is less than our total value of equipment, they pay it because we had that uh, uh, com board or Barry, what was that board that uh, uh, got broken? That was um, talking about at University of Memphis. Yeah. Yeah, that was a uh, controller. Controller. Uh, yeah. and, and they, they gave us you know, they what? gave us new pricing okay. on that controller uh, board. We got more than we paid for it. So uh, I'm not sure as as long as the amount is is under our total amount, I think they'll pay it. And with us having the equipment spread out, we we've reduced our liability or, or our our, yeah, our liability considerably uh, to damage based on on being spread out on on several you know three different sites. Right. Okay. And I, and I don't know if if we really want to do a laptop and and for instance I have that uh, pop up uh, that tent uh, at my house. Do you really want to uh, have that under insurance? Well, and I'm not saying to do ensure that. Um, I was just so trying to get an inventory like of equipment. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, because um, I emailed Jim a while back, I think asking whenever he did, I guess log on to pay it or whatever, if he could pull the list to to use that. So instead of saying, "Hey Barry, can you go write down a list from scratch or something for equipment that we've got repeater wise?" I figured, hey, like when uh, surely you know we could just he could pull a list of what's insured and i could take that and to add that into the inventory list because uh, like you said so if you've got like the tent um you know i know uh i think you've got the projector now but like when the projector is here or wherever just kind of knowing in general where the key things are um you know so, i mean stuff happens uh I don't expect any issues to, to come about it right now, but, um, you know, you never know uh, yeah. with stuff and, and it'd be better to know what's where. So if something ever did happen that wasn't good, then um, we would have issues. Or, uh, You're breaking up, Mary Jean. Uh, I figured it would be good for us to have an inventory list of equipment over, I don't know, either frequently used stuff or equipment over a certain value. Um, have it, have it all in one space. Do we have any kind of listing of any of our, our items that we're looking at? And so as far we, as I know, we don't. Well, we really need to have something. So when we pass it from year to year, we have that list and we can always update it. And keep yeah. it running total of the of the dollar amount that we pay for it, and if it's insured or not. So I would yeah. think you need to have something in there. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I'm not ready to work on that yet, um, but I know Jim got me a big chunk of that. So at some point, I'll probably touch base with Barry and then touch base with Joe and and, and well, all of you really uh, to see what is where and and all that. So um, just wanted to give you a heads up on that. So uh, the only other thing I really had um, that's on our list to discuss, and it was actually on our list to discuss at the August meeting, and I plum forgot to bring it up, but normally at this time, uh, we discuss what giveaways we want to hand out at the November meeting. But um, I think I've got the, or I know I've, I've had this, I think on the agenda, well, I know I haven't consistently sit down on an agenda, but the November 8th meeting of the membership 
uh, meeting is on election day. Uh, so not only um, it's on election day, but it's gonna be our election day. Uh, I think in the past, I wanna say we've met in the church um, in the, uh, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Oh, sanctuary. Oh, in the sanctuary. Oh, yeah. in the sanctuary. We've only met in the sanctuary one time. And that yeah. was when, uh, I'm trying to think what was going, uh, we met when, when they had a lot of junk in, in the, in our room. They had that, uh, somebody had a, a carport sale going on. Did we, for the other times that it's fallen on election day, did we move the date then? Or should, we, do we want to consider, I don't, this is a few months ahead, but do we want to consider a different meeting spot? Do we want to okay, consider we just making Bill that Bill Stevens Church only? is what you did. Yeah, we, yeah, went to Bill Stevens Church. Different church. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, do we want to um, consider it? Because I know we probably need to, with the way COVID and everything has been, we probably need to start looking at that now. Uh, do we want to try to just meet in another spot or do we want to um, fall back on going Zoom only that month? And we, and we don't have to decide now, but I guess the question is, do we need to start looking at other locations or do we want to wait a month? Well, we could look at the sanctuary and go ahead and if we're going to do it, ask them if we can use I it. don't know if they they prefer not to have us in the sanctuary, I don't think. Okay. So we'll need to find a, another another location. Okay, Plus well, the fact um, if, if we're meeting there and there's voting going on, it's going to be a parking situation problem. Okay. So is it a problem if we make that meeting a, a virtual only or Zoom only? That's what I was kind of leaning towards that. Um, because I, th I think it would be easier for people to understand, oh, something's going on. They're back online this month versus, well, are we online or are we this place or that place or, or whatnot? Um, I mean, we can still, if we want to, what we could do is just brainstorm some ideas for other locations over the next month. And then we would just need to know, uh, cause we would have to, we would need to, to iron it out. I prefer to iron it out what we're gonna do by October instead of waiting until the last minute. So that way we can kind of advertise it ahead of time just because um, if we're gonna have it in a different spot, I'd rather advertise it ahead of time. Uh, then wait till the last minute because yeah. that's such a significant change. So um, I, I guess if y'all want to take the, the the next month to start brainstorming some other possible meeting location ideas, and then if we decide that we want to do virtual only, we can do virtual only. And if any of those sound like a good option, uh, then we can look at it from there. So, but um, so that's something to think about. Do we want to do giveaways this year? Also, or do we want to consider that maybe for a December meeting or do we want to hold off on giveaways? Um, Cause I know we have, I don't think we've been doing the tickets at all this year, but we could do that for if they're, if they're on Zoom or in person, uh, we could say, you know, this meeting, if you're here, you're, you're in, or we can wave it one more year and then start fresh in January with those giveaways. I don't know, what do y'all, what are your thoughts? Well, the giveaways were to encourage people to come and vote. And if we're going to be doing it on online, okay. do we really need the enticement if it's going to be online only? I gotcha. I don't know. Uh, okay. And then the question is, is somebody's going to have to go through the attendance uh, thing and write out tickets for each one of the meetings that we've had and, and put it in to, uh, uh, to get it into a barrel to do a drawing anyway. Yeah. 
well, do we want to waive the giveaways for one more year and then start fresh in January with the tickets for meetings? Because I don't think we had them last year either. We didn't. So. Um, Or we could, we could wait another month. Of years. Hmm. I thought we kind of stopped doing that a while back. We stopped doing the drawing. COVID. Yeah. But we still gave stuff away. It, it, we just didn't, people didn't pay for tickets. Um, well, if we need to wait until next month when we decide, we can. Because uh, surely a month would be enough time to get that. But that's something to think about as well. Do we want to do giveaways again? We haven't been doing tickets for meeting attendance. Um, we could probably figure it out if we needed to, or we could change the parameters since we haven't been doing that if we needed to. But something to think about. All right. Uh, well, well, Carolyn's been keeping the record and has it on the master sheet, right, Carolyn? Yeah, I can. So I'd probably just um, just automatically print off tickets. If you decide on a format you want, just funnel it in there from oh, this. Oh, okay. That's right. You're an IT person. <laughs> yeah, was. I'm retired. IT is like a Marine. You, you're always one. I guess so. All right, well, uh, Carolyn, we'll start off with the board and officer reports. Um, we'll start off with- Oh, okay, with sure. Um, I got some uh, membership applications emailed to me from Jim. Um, some came from uh, via mail to our post office box and some mm -hmm. came through the August meeting. So we have KJ4BDU, Dennis Foster, he, and Cynthia. So KJ4VUV, and we have W5DJW, David Wilkie, who's a general. He is a new member. Daryl and Lisa Sheffield, KK4D and K4POM, a renewal. Um, KN4WGM, David Carey, a renewal. Um, Spencer McGee, KQ4AQK. That's a mouthful for a call sign. KQ4AQK, and he is a new member. And uh, we have John, John and Jean Parrish. So KD4EUZ, KD4FIP, renewals. So do we have a motion to accept these? I would, I have two. Uh, I was waiting on about the membership. Uh, we had two students from the class uh, uh, give give me a check for uh, that made payable to AWRL for AWRL membership. And with that, they, they get a free membership balance of the year. Uh, one is David Colston, C-O-L-S-T-O-N. His call is K-I-5 Whiskey Quebec Alpha. And the second uh, gentleman is Rod, uh, hold on one second. Is Rod uh, Robinson, R O B I N S O N, K Q 4 Charlie November Uniform. Can we include did, them? Did they did, fill out applications? They filled out a uh, AWRL application. I did not. They okay. have not filled out a, but I'd like to try to get them in. I'll get them to get an application and get it to you. Okay. All right. We can, yeah. Um, we the can AWRL application is pretty much uh, everything that's needed for a new, uh, for a new one. I can send you those. Okay. Uh, and then I also have one, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, Trish Clevenger, C-L-E-V-E-N-G-E-R, and her call sign is Kilo Mike for Delta Papa um, Oscar. And she's the one 
that she joined AWRL, uh, and she filled out the form on the bus. And like I said, I actually forgot about it until I was going through sorting everything before this meeting. So I will scan that to you in the next day or two, uh, so that way you can get that information. So uh, she filled out one as well. So, um, but yeah, that's a good, okay, that's a good group for, for all of yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised it's very good. So do we have a motion to accept these? So move. All right, so uh, I've got a motion from Joe. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, uh, Jim Martin second in the motion. All those in favor of accepting uh, the bundle of membership applications that we have, say aye or raise your aye. hand. Aye. Uh, all those opposed, uh, say no or raise your hand. Okay, it unanimously passes. So, good deal. Where is it we get $15 a membership from AWRL? Yes. That's $45 right there. 30. Got three of them. Two. Two from you and one from Mary Jean. Well, the but, one I did, uh, that's a she, that's a renewal. Yeah. Oh, is that a renewal for our day? Well, she, she was a member she like eight, eight to 10 years ago, but she joined AWRL, uh, or she was going to join, uh, or she was joining at the time that she was filling it out. So I would have to get in touch with her, I guess, to, you, you I guess maybe the, next time we see her. No, it's not going to count because I have to send in a form okay. with their AWRL membership to get the $15. Okay. Okay. Well, 30 is not bad. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Uh, anything else for you, Carolyn? I uh, know that's it. Thank you. All right, uh, Joe, you want to? Well, on I the membership, you had you we, talk a lot about it, but would you fill us in? Uh, the membership, uh, I put it out to the new hams. Two out of the four that passed the test uh, accept it. Gave me a check uh, on the sixth night of the class. I sent it in uh, on the twenty. Uh, 20- 2nd of uh, August, uh, they say they they do the uh, refunds to the club uh, at the end of each month. I'm just going to wait and see if it doesn't come, you know, by, the, say, the 10th of the month, I'm going to call and, and find out uh, what's going on because uh, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit upset with AWRL. If they want members, they've got to they've got to act like a, a business, and and not drag things out. Um, but uh, so uh, and and I'd say we could go ahead and open up, even for renewals. Uh, they they fill out the application. Uh, it's online. It's the same application. Uh, that uh, for renewals and, or for new, it's just that you have a different designation for the renewal and the new uh, person and you can send it in. You can do it once a month or once a quarter or whatever. Uh, I don't want to hold anybody's checks. And, and I had the, the two new hams make a check out to uh, uh, AWRL. Um, they could make it, they could send, they can send in a uh, credit card, but I don't want to see a credit card number. So, uh, you know, and they were making comments that, well, I had to find, find my checkbook. Uh, but uh, uh, that's something that we'll just have to deal with. Um, I guess what we can do is, is they can, for the $49, we can get them to do do PayPal, send it to us PayPal and figure out what the differential is and have it 50 or $51 and do it that way if, if they want to go through the club uh, and do it on a credit card. Um, I'd be willing to, to accept that. Uh, it's going to add some work for Jim. Um, but... Uh, 
I think it's you know something that we can, uh, particularly for the for the new hams in in my class, I'm more than happy to try to do it, uh, as long as they're getting the reimbursements back to us in a timely manner. If yeah. they're not going to get the reimbursement back to us in a timely manner, then then uh, I I'd say scrap the the program. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not sure how some people may see, you know, paying more for their AWRL membership. You know, if we're if we're tacking on something for the PayPal fees, I'm wondering if maybe we should maybe consider just letting people pay the the forty nine dollars and we just eat the the PayPal fee from what we're reimbursed by AWRL. Because I, I think otherwise people will be like, well, screw it, I'll just you know. I'll just go on the website and and pay for my membership, you know, and not have to worry about going through the club. Well, it, it's what is it? Eighty cents plus one point nine nine percent. Jim. Now. Jim, what is it? Eighty eighty cents plus one point nine nine percent of the fee. Uh, right now. Or from what I saw, it was forty nine cents plus the one ninety nine oh, or one point nine nine. Okay. Yeah, but as you mentioned, that those fees may be changing. Um, I don't know. So I mean, we might be a ways away from doing anything with PayPal, but that's definitely something to think about. It's a dollar a dollar forty seven right now. Uh, that we'd be eating. I, I guess that would be okay. However, for a renewal, it's only five, $5, but still that's three and a half that we, that uh, we'd make. You can't make that at the bank by putting money in the bank and trying to yeah. save it. Right. Mm -mm. That's true. Well, like, like Joe mentioned, I'd, I'd certainly be interested to see this first batch, how quick the turn quick or how slow the turnaround is to get that back because if it's going to yeah. take a couple months to get it back um i know that would that would sway my opinion on what we need to do but um so i'm, I'm certainly looking forward to hearing uh, your update on that joe for when that when that comes in so for this first round is that coming back to you joe or is that going it's, to the it's PO coming box? back to me Okay. I, I on purpose wanted it to come back to me to see how so you can see quick exactly the how many days. Yeah, yeah, because I, I only checked if the, it went the to the top of the box every every week or every other week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want me to continue on? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, I guess Huntsville came out pretty uh, effective. We hit our twenty eight. Uh, members for the bus, even though three okay. weren't able to make it. Uh, and uh, so that's good uh, for training. Uh, I'm proposing a, a class to start the, on uh, Monday nights in the, in the first week of November for uh, six Monday nights. And uh, that way, uh, it'll finish up on December the 12th, from November 6th to December the 12th. Did you say that was for general? For general, correct. Yeah. Oh, one other thing. On the... Uh, this last tech class, uh, I had a gentleman tell me about it. Uh, I guess it was the Thursday night uh, before Huntsville uh, that uh, QRZ and Gigaparts has gone to uh, give a radio to a new licensee within 30 days. And uh, so far, three of the four students have gotten their radio. One of That's them had awesome. already gotten a, 
uh, a DMR radio and was dragging his feet. And I said, there's no sense in you not getting the radio. You can never have enough handheld radios. <laughs> So he, he's going to get it, but uh, I haven't seen it in person to see how it goes, but uh, I'm going to get with them to see if they've got them programmed or not and, uh, and try to, you know, get it on, get them on the air. And then also maybe sell them uh, these uh, two meter amplifiers. Uh, these two that I have, uh, I think that's a good thing for, for technicians that uh, don't want to spend a whole lot of money with for a mobile radio. And I, I you, bought, uh, I bought you, some antennas. Something to, I'm sorry. I bought some antennas, uh, bought three of them to get a lower, uh, get free shipping. So I've got some antennas, mag mount antennas that I can sell them personally to get it uh, so they have it in their vehicle. But uh, that's uh, the QRZ thing. And I, I don't know how long it's going to last, but uh, we'll see what happens. Through, I think it's through the end of October from what I read. Oh, so that, and, and that might be something good to place in our um, in Sparks. Let people know Yo, that, that that's available. Do you mind getting something to Mike for that? Well, it's only for new people with the right, last 30 days. People, right, right. So who's gotten their license in the last 30 days that's a club member? Yeah. Well, it might so encourage somebody to, up, yeah. oh, I was just thinking, you know, it might encourage somebody to, um, you know, to come to a meeting and, and get their license mm -hmm. or, or come, you know, come to some VE session. Yeah, I think it's just a good thing to publicize to the club that we had three members that, that got it because, you know, a lot of people read about it, but they don't ever think anybody here would get it. And we've got three people that went through the class and got it. And they got them very that's quickly, too. It was like three days time from the time. Yeah, they I ordered. think that's something, a little blurb in the newsletter. Okay. Would be great. I've got some... Uh, Rod sent me pictures of the box and radio and stuff. I'll, I'll take a picture and, and uh, write it up and send it to Mike. Unless yeah, Mike, unless I've already sent it to you. Which one? Uh, the Explorer QRZ one radio. Did I? No, I don't have that. Okay. And, and that, that information is right on there, right on the QRZ homepage. What, what kind of radio was it, Joe? Two meter, 440. Okay. It's a special one that QRZ and Giga parts got made. Yeah, it's it's a it's a rebranded TYT. And I think they, they removed some of the features on it that don't apply to uh, to hams, such as like the the scrambling feature or whatever they have for for uh, privacy, so I think I think they're also used for um, for business band radio. That's all for me. I do need to get give uh, send Mike uh, reimbursement uh, information to get reimbursed for a number of things, but I'll get that to him shortly or to, uh, to no, Jim no, rather. Send it, yeah, send it to me. Yep. Yeah. I was, I was like, I wonder what did, what would Mike have been by? No. Okay. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Um, Scott. Uh, I'm not buying anything. We should have plenty of food and stuff. So that's all I have. And gotta you got a case of Diet Coke. I'm gonna have a, a case of Diet Coke. Mm -mm. That's all I have. Uh, I'll bring a fan. Um, I've got a I've got a blower. It came out of a furnace that I have it hooked up. It just makes a lot of racket, but it blows a lot of air. So I've got a carpet cleaner 
blower fan that I can bring. I thought you weren't going to be here. I'm not, but I can bring it by and leave it. Okay. All right. That's whatever. So, and then also have that uh, stand up fan that from field day that uh, Richard Martin didn't want to take home. Yeah, we, we still got that. Um, I have, I have, I have a few fans that I can bring. So it's not a problem. But just the fan. I think there's a box fan, an old box fan in that closet that was left yeah. at field day. Yeah. Um, but if anyone has a box fan, like a 36 inch box fan. But uh, I don't have that one that big. I have that blower that I use. They that's do cool. have, there is one fan there that's when I uh, did uh, the last class, uh, Rick Tillman turned it on. So it was, it's there. And I guess they brought in, uh, Michael Gwynn said they had a couple of fans there. I think we need to get Ham's air conditioning system that he used to air condition his tent. <laughs> we'll see. Just whoever gets there, uh, are we going to do any testing beforehand? Um, uh, I haven't talked to Bob lately, but I assume from what he said uh, when we talked about a month ago that he was going to offer it if we were meeting in person. So. Okay. Well, if he's there, right. I mean, just crack open the doors, I guess. And we'll go from there. Well, if, if the system upstairs is working, then, we, yeah, then uh, he doesn't have a problem. Yeah, he doesn't have a problem. We could just meet up there. I know it's two separate units. So if the air went out, I would, would assume that only one unit went out, not both of them. Mm hmm. That's all I have. All right, Barry. All right. Um, as far as the uh, A2 repeater, there's really no updates on that. We're still kind of monitoring it, and we've just got to decide. I mean, we're going to have uh, to have tower climbers. Um, we just got to decide what we're going to have them do when they get here. we got to be ready for them. And... Um, you know, try to cover all the bases. Uh, if it's the antenna that's the problem, I'm not sure what we're going to do. So uh, that's part of what we've got to figure out. The uh, I'm monitoring every now and then. It's shut off right now, but I can turn it on from here. And um, I do that and uh, uh, check the signal level. And I, I did that about two days ago. And it's like half scale on my uh, radio. And I think that's pretty weak because usually it's full scale. Even though I'm in Cairo, that repeater usually, you know, hits me full scale. But um, I'll keep you updated on that as we go. Uh, the 440 repeater that went out, uh, of course, uh, we were loaned a repeater, uh, which is what we're using right now. What we did do was put it on low power and um, uh, put a amplifier on it to uh, boost it up. So it's it's putting out 50, 60 watts, something like that, which is uh, plenty. Uh, it's about what we were doing before. And um, but we've decided not to run those things at full power because I think that's what finally took it out. Anyway, uh, the one that went bad, I have sitting right over here on my workbench. Um, I have already ordered, I ordered, went ahead and ordered two finals for it. Uh, the total is going to be about $62, which is not bad. But I wanted to spare in case I screw up the first one. These things are not, not easy um, just to get them out. You almost have to burn them up to get them out. And um, but uh, anyway, I stopped working on it until I get the others in and make sure I've got the right thing. And uh, uh, at that point, I'll continue on. It won't take me long. 
probably be a piece of cake to put it in. It's taking it out. That's the problem. I have sucked all the salt, most of the solder off of it. And um, but these are weird, weird looking little chips that are on there. And uh, anyway, it's a work in progress. Uh, those parts will not be here. They, I got something today. It'll be the 27th of September. I'm sure it has to come uh, from China, you know, on a boat. So everything like that has to come from China. So uh, even though they're Japanese radios, <laughs> but uh, still, it's the only place. In, and I had to be specific about where I bought them from because most of them wanted you to buy a quantity of a thousand, stuff like that. So uh, I did find a place I could buy individuals, and that's what I did. So uh, anyway, it's in the works. Parts are on the way, as they say. So, but other than that, I have no other updates. Goodness. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you for doing all you're doing. Um, you know, I know it's a lot, and I'm sure it's stressful, uh, especially with everything much. else that you've had going on. But yeah, I feel like if anybody can figure it out, it'll be you. <laughs> well, I got Rick helping me too, so he deserves a lot of credit. So, yeah. Um. Well, and I, I don't know. I just kind of thought of this because he, I know he covered and and helped a lot um, when you had to go out of town, and I know he's been helping you quite a bit, and he doesn't have any sort of title or anything like that. Do we want to do anything? For him, like give him a gift card or, or even just a thank you letter. Then at the end of the year, even. Um, yeah, whatever you want to do, because he's a uh, he uh, puts in a lot, you know, to help help me take care of these things. So. Okay. Well, maybe since you work with them a lot, I don't know, think on if there's anything we could do, whether it's as simple as a recognition and a thank you letter, or if we need to do a little more, um, since he's done a lot with that. And I know y'all use a lot of the gather for the different orders thing. Have better news next time. Please. All right, Jim. All right. Uh, you mind if I present? I uh, share my, share, my, share, share my screen. Okay. Okay. Everybody see my screen? Yes, we do. Okay. Very good. All right. So uh, we had a bit, fair bit of activity this month. Um, we started off the month with, uh, in, the, in the checking, $23,267.40. And um, with the various deposits and uh, check payments, uh, we ended the month with $24,572.90. Um, I'm going to drop down here instead of going through this. Let me show you what we have here. So with the applications that we received, and the payments for those. Um, we did take in $100 for membership, uh, no donations. Then uh, under deposits, we did get our reimbursement from, uh, from Mara for, the, for their portion of field day of $129.75. Uh, Joe took in uh, all the bus fare here and made several deposits for us, um, $2,035. Uh, he uh, also took in some estate sales, $167, more bus fare, $340, and the uh, table sales. Um, as Joe mentioned, um, that he had taken in $1,254, but $200 of that went to Bill Stevens' um, widow. And so we took in a, a total of $3,725.75. I'm sorry, $3,825.75, including those uh, applications. And then um, I wrote a number of checks here for uh, for the Hamfest and for um, 
club refreshments. So uh, the first and third check, uh, those went to Scott uh, for reimbursement of, for refreshments. And then for the uh, bus fare, we had the $2,040 and then the admission to the, the ham fest of 375. And then um, Joe, you said that you have, you, have, you need to send me something for the uh, tables. Is that correct? I think that's what Joe said. Okay, so um, the only other item we have here is our uh, our CD that continues to grow, and um, and I know that I had a action item from our last meeting that I was going to look into. Um, you know what our options are, and you know see where, where, uh, you know what what the rates are, and then present that to you guys. But I haven't done that yet. So, you guys, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so no make problem. sure. Um, so I think that covers everything for for this month. I would like to. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to brown nose here. But I would like to recognize Joe for all the effort that he put into the bus trip and keeping track of all this equipment from the estate sales that that um, you know that helps the club. So, Joe, thank you very much, sir. Thank you for the kind words. I know you you have a you have, I think you have the biggest thankless job here. Yeah, no, that's true. And everything when when we unpacked it, it was all nice and neat, organized with the list and everything. So um, very well done. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. All right, that's that's all I have. One thing uh, I noticed that you paid three hundred and seventy-five dollars to of the Huntsville Ham Fest for entry. Yes. We had we had one entry paid for on the uh, table, so they actually owe us fifteen dollars. But uh, okay, we can. I, I'll negotiate that for reduction next year. Okay, yeah, I I, I brought the blank check, and I signed it, and um, and then Steve, Steve. pretty much took, he he pretty much took care of the call and the and and getting the uh, the number of tickets. So he may just not he he may not have remembered that. There was one built into the tables. Yeah. Okay. With the CD, what date did, did that uh, roll over? Mm -hmm. uh, give me a moment to log in and, and take a look here. Because okay. um, I know I like what what everybody was thinking. Um, I think the one that we've got now that uh, had finished up earlier, I do like the idea of keeping some extra cash on hand until we know exactly what we're dealing with, with the repeater. Um, and I know you haven't had a chance to look up current rates yet, but uh, do we want to go on and since the one now is going to be expiring in October, do we want to go on and just roll that one over again? If if numbers look right, um, do we want to consider that, or do we want to hold on to both for now, uh, for all that money? I, I don't think we need all that. Surely not all that for the for the repeater issue. But I don't know. What do you think? What do y'all think? I'd say keep keep it. Uh uh until we know what we're gonna what we're what we're up against because if it's heliacs we've got a big uh uh expense coming up like what what would big be for heliacs barry what's that about three dollars uh, a foot it'd be over 10 grand <laughs> oh okay a whole lot of money um but that keep in mind, Joe, we have another uh, run all the way up, you know, about 200 feet that we we might could uh, utilize. 
So, uh, you know, lots of options. And yeah, that so maturity date the, is October 19th. That doesn't include the climber either installing it, does it? No, I'm just kind of giving you a rough idea of what the, uh, I mean, that is some expensive stuff, let me tell you. So uh, I don't know. How old is what, what we have up there already? 20 years. That's that's not bad. Um, you know, and, and what, what bugs me is that uh, when this first happened, we went up there uh, a couple of months later or several months later, and all of a sudden it worked beautiful. But it did that for a month or two and then went back to what it was doing. So, you know, it's uh, we've got meters on it right now. All you have to do is go in the room and you can see the meters, you know, what they're doing. So, um, you know, I don't, I just don't know. I wish I did. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I guess it doesn't hurt to see what the interest rate would be, but, um, and there's going to be a, a board meeting between now and then we can talk more and then maybe Barry will have some, I mean, I, if we don't have a climber by then, I know there's a lot that's not going to be answered, but maybe we'll have a little bit better idea of, I don't know, or maybe we won't. <laughs> Well, I'll, f I'll find out what happens with this CD if um, if the maturity date comes and we haven't made a decision if it if it just goes to a month to month or if they automatically renew it at a you know for a certain period of time. I'll I'll, I'll get that answer for us so that we we know what our options are. Okay. I don't want to I don't want to be surprised and think you know. I don't make any assumptions that you know it's going to be fine, and then find out that it's locked in for another two years or something. Sounds so, good. So I'll get that. Eight years. All right. Uh, anything else for us, Jim? Um, I don't think so. All right, Lynn. I don't have anything. All right, uh, Mike. Yeah, um, so what's the program gonna be this month? Uh, you wanna just send me a title? Yeah, cause it'll be something, I mean, or we could figure it out real quick. Uh, Introduction to CW, maybe. I mean, something simple because that's the angle it's going to be. Is how to get into how how to get into CW. So, okay. Um, and you're going to do it. Well, I mean, it's just going to be a video. So, uh, okay. And then uh, Joe has sent me. Um, a new phone number for John. Do I need to put that in uh, Sparks? Change that number to uh, his contact information at Sparks. John. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then the YL says that there was nothing going to be in June or July. So, are we? Is the YL still meeting or not meeting? Um. So I talked to Linda because uh, I know initially it was really the biggest thing is that um, there wasn't enough interest in doing the wild net when we were we were on the 440 net. And so we kind of took it as a summer break. Um, so I have not, I'm going to be taking over the wild net uh, with coordinating, 
coordinating it and everything, I, I would say leave it in there where it says we're on a, on a summer break or we're on a break because I need to get in touch with the YL uh, net control operators. I would like to see us get it up and going again because I think I've heard enough YLs on the net, on the 440 net that we could, but the thing is having enough who are free and, and willing to, to get in there and call it so it's not one or two of us consistently calling it um, the whole time. And, and Carolyn, you don't have to put all that in there. Um, but uh, I would say for now, we're on a, on a break until further notice. And I can, I can come up with something to write on that. I just have to reach out to, to see if we can get enough NCOs lined up to, to get that up and going again. Because I would like to see us um, get that going again. I think it would be good. And from what you know, Barry said and, and everything, I feel like this is going to be something that we are dealing with for a while and um, and all that, so. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, and I'm working on Sparks right now. Everything that's been sent to me has uh, already been updated, so I'll just update the rest of it as it comes, and not a, a lot of movement on the website or anything this month, so I'll try to address some of that in September. So that's all I have. Okay. So um, I kind of referenced this earlier. I know, and I know I was one of the ones who was really supporting the idea of kind of purging the email list, but um, and I meant to call you before and talk about it, uh, but this is probably good that we talk about it as a board to see where everybody stands. So I think it was Patricia who had mentioned that she had seen the email and she has not been opening them for a while. Uh, she hasn't been doing anything with it and something because of everything, the way everything has been, spoke to her to open the email and there was the information about um, Huntsville and, and everything else. And that out of, so out of nowhere, she just decided to start opening her emails again and then decided to go on the bus trip. And then, you know, she's turned in a membership application, joined ARRL and, and all that. So, um, was she a I member wonder, of the club? Now she is, since we just voted so her before in. Before she was not? No, because she, I think she said she hasn't been a member in like eight plus years or something. She said, as soon as she got her license, I think she was involved a little and then just, she kind of just drifted out of it, didn't do anything for a long time and then happened to see, see an email. Um, so I was just wondering, I still think we should go through that list that you sent us and pull out the ones that we know, hey, this is an old email address or this is a silent key, this is somebody who, yeah, you know, whatever. Um, but I almost wonder if we should hesitate on actually um, purging anybody who um, who just hasn't opened it lately, just in the off chance that something happens and they decide to start checking it again. But I mean, I would say that's your call and the board's call and, and all that. What do you guys think? Um, it just, it caused me hesitation after hearing her say that. And I, I have a sure uh, that suggestion that we put the Sparks link at the very top of the email and the Zoom uh, uh, invitation afterwards. Put the Zoom information at the top of the publication. No, I, I'm saying put the put the Delta Club uh, link to the Sparks at the very top of the email going out, okay. and then put the li Zoom link underneath it. You still are going to have the Sparks, uh, the Zoom link in the body of the Sparks on the first page. Yeah, I can do that. That's not a problem. Uh, do we have an unsubscribe link in the email? So yes. people okay. Yes. 
I say if they, you know, if you're getting mail and you don't do not want it and you don't hit unsubscribe when you know it's a legitimate link, you you want to keep on getting the publication. And while Patricia is feeling inspired to get back into uh, radio, maybe we can inspire her to to become a secretary. No, she hadn't been to six meetings. I, I know, I'm teasing. Oh. oh, well, maybe next year, maybe next year. Oh, man. We can make an exception. Mm -mm. Yep, truly, yeah, board of director thinking right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody then in that case is a potential, you know, some sort of potential leadership. Uh, it's just figuring out where, where to place them. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm um, open to whatever we decide, Mary Jean. Well, I think, I mean, I guess, I guess if there's no objection for you guys, maybe if we continue to kind of look at that list from time to time and, and see what, what emails actually need to be pulled, but as far as inactivity, leave those in for the time being and then just, I don't know, maybe reassess it on down the road and and everything. Um, or if anything, maybe we kind of look at that information that Mike pulled and see if there's any way that we could get in touch with some of those folks who the email addresses belong to. Maybe if we gave them a phone call or something at some point to say, hey, you know, just checking in and, um, you know, is there the anything sad thing about that or... is they'll say, well, I hadn't been active for the last 10 years and you're just now calling me. <laughs> yeah. That does happen. Yeah. I'm sure, you know, um, but I don't know. It may, uh, it may only take a phone call to get some answers we need, or they may, like you said, say, no, thank you. And then at that case, that might be an answer that we need to clear that, yeah. that email address. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. All right. Um, anything else you got, Mike? Nope, that was it. All right, John. Uh, basically, I uh, spoke with Carrie Blackwell about being on a subcommittee to uh, look for the uh, two vacancies. Um, I've also been leaning on my backyard neighbor, Jason, quite a bit, but uh, he, he really doesn't want to be uh or, or my takeaway is he doesn't want to be the director of it he doesn't mind coming up with some programs he's got a lot of great ideas but um and he's willing to help out but uh, uh I, I think he's hoping that somebody else can lead it and maybe uh maybe solicit some of his ideas um so that's where we're at i'll, I'll be having a meeting sometime soon uh to uh to to look for uh potential candidates to uh, fill those vacancies. Okay. All right, because you, did you say Carrie Blackwell or? Yes. Did you mean Perry? Just KM Force. Uh, okay. I'll LCU. You. All right. Yeah, I can reach out to uh, Perry as well. I, I yeah. forgot to, I know he's been busy since the election, sorting some things out. So um, I'll reach out to him as well. All right, good deal. Well, if Carrie, uh, I'm glad to hear she was willing to help out uh, with some input then as that third person, because for those of you who didn't know, so um, after the technician class, the testing session, Joe and I talked to Perry Hayes, and he was willing to serve on that as our non-board member, and then board, uh, Joe figured it would be good to maybe if we could find another person to maybe serve in his stead, and he could kind of help out as needed, and so um, I mentioned that to John, and he's so he's reached out to Carrie. So hopefully we've got some outside input for folks who have been around for a little while, uh, some who have served on leadership roles, um, maybe not necessarily on the board, but, you know, as well, they've both served as net control operators. So they've been around long enough to kind of know who's who and who's active and everything. So, um, uh, well, if y'all need anything while you do that, let us know. I've still been trying to brainstorm. I haven't sat down to really go through that list, but uh, I imagine I'm going to do that here sometime in the next few weeks because I know um, we'll probably need to have an idea 
by the board meeting who we want to nominate and then we'll have to make the nominations at the October club meeting. So it's only about a month away now. Um, but, but yeah, thank you for doing that. <clears throat> All right. Um, does anybody have anything else? Okay, well, real quick, let me do. Well, that should pretty much wrap everything up. Um, just a reminder for some of the upcoming events. Uh, this Saturday and Sunday um, is the Bike MS Rock and Ride 150. As far as I know, he's got all the volunteers he needs for that, but I've not checked in with him uh, lately. But it sounded like he had enough last month, so we should be good there. And then next month, the 10th, uh, October 8th is the Bluff City Blues bike ride. And then of course, um, that um, the October meeting is when we nominate the, uh, the candidates for the upcoming board of directors. And then of course, something to keep, that we need to keep in mind is what we're gonna do for the November uh, membership meeting. So, all right, well, anybody, uh, Anybody have anything else before we go or some of us go? I guess uh, to, if we're wanting to meet in person, if somebody's wanting to meet in person, does anybody have a church that they belong to that uh, would be open to uh, meeting? Yeah. So yeah, don't, um, if, you, if you're a member of any church in the area, if you can reach out uh, or if you know of anywhere that's got maybe like an auditorium or something, uh, that we could use just for one time. Um, that's either hopefully, preferably free. If not, you know, we could talk about it if there's a small fee or donation or something we need to make. Um, but we can talk about it more next month because we'll need to, like I said, I, I would like to know what we're going to do if it's going to be a different location by next month so we can get that information out there. So thank you for that reminder. What about the Red Cross? Where are they at? They're in Midtown. Cleveland and uh, uh, Madison and just east of Cleveland. Or Crosstown. I don't know. Do y'all think that um, folks would be willing to head down that way? At that time? Uh, one of my students day? was was one of the employees at the Red Cross. And I'm sure Adrian could, Mosley could help if, if we're wanting it there, but who wants to go to Midtown? I, I would prefer not to head to Midtown, especially after uh, recent events, but- um, Yeah, yeah, that's not uh, a good idea. And, and, and by the way, I know I don't wanna go off on a tangent or anything, but, um, Eliza Fletcher, yeah, um, she was one of the Swamp Stompers runners, and a couple of years ago, she won the 25K, and she's competed in it the past few years, so we've probably seen her and worked with her and, and dealt with her and everything at, at that event that we've done, uh, so I know that was, that's a horrible situation and everything, but I figured I'd let you guys know. I'm not going to make that a big thing at the, the club meeting, but... Um, I thought that was worth sharing. I saw they posted that today, the Swamp Stompers group. So it's a, a sad ordeal. Um, all right. What about, well, uh, what about holding our meeting at the uh, at the police station? It is like the, like Mara does. Is that an option? It no, might be. I don't here. know. But they have. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think they're one of their groups uh, uh, meet uh, and that's why MARA doesn't meet there in uh, October or November. Oh, okay. Uh, but then again, that's the on a Thursday and we have it on a Tuesday. So I don't know if, if they have things on a Tuesday or not. Uh, gotcha. I don't know if the lady that I've had contact with in the past, uh, 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 
if she's still even em uh, employed with the police department. I can try her, her number and, and see Mrs. Seagrave, I believe is her name. Do we consider moving the the general meeting to a different day of that same week? So Monday or Wednesday or Thursday or? Um, I don't know. That's, that's, just, that's, just that's getting a hard call because we've had so many. Too <laughs> convoluted. Um, but I mean, the thing is communication. So if we're moving to a different location, we're going to need to heavily communicate on the net in Sparks, you know, on social media, um, everything. And, uh, you know, I don't even mind running up there. I know we're limited on what we can do with with election day, but surely we could run up there and put a sign kind of outside in the area somewhere that says Delta Club membership. No, you, know, ex you can't put any can't. signage up. <laughs> okay. They don't I, thought that, I didn't know. I thought that was only candidates, though, but it's for anything. Yeah, I wouldn't let any signage go on my place because okay. you don't know what's political and what's not political. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we're going to need a lot of communication, whether we're a different date or a different uh, location. I mean, I'd be open to a different day, but we would need to have enough board members who could help host it. And at that point, I would really rather just do all virtual, I think, yeah. than, than do a different date. But I don't know. Um, I don't agree. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, well, anything else before we adjourn and start in on the um, PayPal thing? All right. Well, uh, if there's no objection, we are adjourned at 8.40 p.m. All right. Everybody I'll have stop a great recording. Morning. Have a great evening, yeah. everybody. Be safe. Um, and oh, actually, that works out really well. It's not, it might not stop. So you can, should be able to stop the recording, Joe, but it might, it probably won't download until all of us log off the meeting. But it might, I don't know, it might do that if you log out, but it might also not actually start.